You're listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast, celebrating hunting dog heritage, competition, and community. United Kennel Club has been the hunting dog sports home for coonhounds, beagles, retrievers, pointers, cur feist, and more for over 125 years. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. This is Trevor Wade. I'm the Coonhound Program Manager here at UKC, and I'm joined by Alan Gingrich, the Director of Hunting Ops. What's going on today, Alan? I'm having the best day ever, Trevor. <laughs> that good, huh? Yeah, I just got off a great phone call, and yeah, it's all good today. Yeah, well, we had a, we've had a bunch of meetings today, so I know we haven't done yeah. a lot of print for this. Seems uh, like that's all we've got done today. We've had, what, uh, three meetings already, or I have this morning, so yeah. Yeah, well, it's kind Busy of... Busy day. I know I was out last week, so we've been playing catch-up from that. Then you got a little fun trip this weekend and next yeah. weekend and some working on some Beagle stuff. So you got some good stuff going on right now. Yeah, it seems like uh, things are going to uh, come to full swing here in, in just a couple short weeks here and already kind of are leading up to it. So, But yeah, we got some good things coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Or I do a couple fun little fun little trips. This weekend will be a, a, a good one. I'm going to go back up north and... Uh, check out a uh, a uh, this guy's hunting pen for a beagle event on hair. So I'm kind of excited about that. And then uh, next week, go to Mississippi for a meeting with the gun dog guys down there. And so yeah, then Autumn Oak's going to be here right soon after that. Yeah, we kind of we started our day off with our department, our monthly department meeting, and kind of just warned the the ladies in our department about what the September and October holds for them. It's going to be a lot of uh, one or two people in the office at a time type of deal. In those couple months, we're all over the place. That, and we have events going on six weekends in a row. Yeah. Autumn Oaks. And I know you got some big, big ones. I think I may get to go to one or two of them this, uh, yeah. this fall. Yeah. I don't know about yeah. McVeigh maybe, but uh, hopefully the Beagle world, I've not yeah. been there, and we've talked about that a little bit. So. Yeah. Speaking of the world, we're going to talk about the Kunon world today, aren't we? It's time. Yeah. You know, we got autumn oaks looming over us, so it, it feels like the world's forever away. But as soon as you pull out of uh, the Wayne County Fairgrounds, you think, oh, man, the zones are in two I weeks know. here. I so know. let's let's not get let's not fall behind. But, uh, yeah, we have uh, the World Championship on tap, and I thought today would be a good time to go over some of our uh, uh, details. Anybody would need to know for the for the zones and then the world finals and then also answer some uh questions that we get asked frequently. You know, we've been doing this uh, column in the advisor. I know it's been in there for years and years and years, and this year's no different, but I think it's good also to put it on the airwaves for somebody driving down the road uh, to give them some some information. Yeah, this one might be a good one for them to listen to on their way to the world championship. Yeah. Hopefully. Absolutely. Well, this year's the 46th annual UKC Coonhound World Championship, for the night hunts anyways. It started back in 1978. Same year I was born. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, the 39th uh, Ben Show it started Already in 1985. Lies. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so obviously it's uh, our premier coonhound event of the year when we when we uh, crown our two world champions. Um, I'm so looking forward to it already. But let's talk about it yeah. a little bit. You know, 1978, we see pictures of the first ever world champion. You look at the old pictures of going back to those years, and man, how times have changed. It doesn't seem like that long ago to me, you know. And, and maybe some of the older guys, but if you just look at some of those older pictures, just the vehicles and the just everything, just how much it's changed in in forty six years, I guess, and a lot really has. But it's pretty cool to go back and look at those historic pictures. Yeah, I know we 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 listen to a lot of other podcast, coon hunting podcasts, and other media platforms. Other people argue over what was better, you yeah. know, back then or yep. now, and. And I like how some people just say, not better or worse now, it's just different. Yeah. And it's just, I yeah. would have loved to have been there at the first world championship and see what it was like and the anticipation there. Yeah. But also when you look at this past year, 2022, if you were just look at the magazine and not be there, you yeah. think, man, I would love to be there at that event with the live show and all the good pictures and, yeah. and everything going on there. So I think it would be hard for like you and I to really uh, fathom how that might have been. We know how it has been in the last 10, 15, 20 years and, you know, kind of what know what the world looks like now but to be a part of that back in those days can you imagine on the the first ever world championship uh man a lot of those early big major events back in the early days those had to be that had to be exciting yeah you know so just i don't know yeah you know it's a you, world championship do you think uh 45 years from now there's going to be someone sitting at this desk recording a podcast thinking about the first <laughs> annual tournament of champions we were there for that one probably say what was a podcast what's that <laughs> like an eight track deal yeah no kidding <laughs> but uh 
uh, yeah, that always struck me as cool with the TOC being there yeah. at the end. All, they know the the first annual TOC mm. of this kind. And yeah, being a part of history there, yeah. UKC history. So. Yeah. But hey, we're talking here. This uh, episode is going to drop August sixteenth. So, um, and when you're listening to this, there's only two weekends left to qualify for the World Championship. This qualifying year has flown by. And there's only a few more opportunities to get your dog qualified. If it's not already, you have waited till the very last minute. You procrastinated, <laughs> and it is time to get it done now. Yeah. And uh, but today we're going to talk to the dogs, to the people who hopefully have their dogs qualified already. Um, and for those of you that are qualified for the World Hunt at an RQE, a regional qualifying event through the year, or even a qualifying slam on some of our outer clubs um, in unknown parts. Um, the first step is going to be if you qualify for the night hunt is going to be to a zone. You know, we have uh, seven, seven strategically placed zones throughout the country. You know, we try to put on the best we can with clubs that are interested and give everybody a reasonable driving distance. I know some people got to drive a little more than others, but we try to do the best we can at getting everybody a reasonable drive. Yeah. Yeah. Now, before you go to the zone, you obviously have to have your dog entered, pre-entered in advance. You know, what is that deadline to enter for the world? The Saturday at Autumn Oaks is September 2nd, yeah. September 2nd, that Saturday, not Sunday morning, but right. September 2nd, Saturday at Autumn Oaks. And we made it on that day specifically. So folks can actually bring their entry forms or sign up or enter right there at Autumn Oaks, if that's what they that's handy. And it's now, down to the last day, but you can, you can do it there. Don't forget. Yeah, don't forget. And you know how many times, how often we've had it where Sunday morning somebody comes up to me, and man, I so hate that when that happens. It's like, gosh, I can't take it. Not the next day. Yeah, you know, the, with the inception of the online entry, it has made it so much better, uh, especially with that being a holiday weekend, because it's a tricky weekend, because yeah. it's Labor Day weekend. Yeah. If you take it to the post office, you're going to be – you know, you got to be very careful. You, yep. you could be in trouble. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of Autumn Oaks, if you bring your entry there, you want to do it there and you receive one of those gift certificates that you get if you want your cast. And and actually, if you place first in the event, I think you get a $50 gift certificate. That's great. That's yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, but if you have that, you can bring that certificate with you if you want to use it towards your world championship degree and has a code on it and uh, go to the registration booth in the hunt uh, hunt office there at Autumn Oaks. And uh, they can input that code that's on there. You can use that gift certificate. Absolutely. Well, this year, the uh, after you, after you've done that, after you've qualified and you've entered up, uh, the next step is the zones. It's going to be a couple weekends after the entry deadline on September fifteenth and sixteenth this year, Friday and a Saturday. And uh, like I said, we have seven uh, strategically placed zones, uh, and most of them are really similar to where they were last year. We kind of got them on a two year cycle here together, and it's working out really well. Uh, zone one is going to be held at the Brooklyn Sportsman's Club, uh, same place it was last year. That's in Brooklyn, Wisconsin, and it's hosted by the Sugar River Coon Hunters Association uh, with help of some other local clubs yeah. like Argyle and different uh, clubs there in southern Wisconsin. And our Master of Hounds at that event this year is going to be field rep Alan Cal yeah. Glau. Yeah. Have you ever hunted in Wisconsin? No, I've never cut a dog loose there. Yeah, I hunted. Most of what I hunted was in the about the center part of the state. And it's really cool. But they're in the southern part where this club is located at. That is so, it's such beautiful country yeah. there. The good agriculture. It is. Kind of yeah. a little rolly. Yep, it is. Yeah. I, really uh, nice. I got though. to spectate a cast at the uh, Heartland Classic a yeah. couple of years ago, but that fell on another major yeah. event date this, this year. But yeah. yeah, sure did. Uh, zone two is going to be once again at the Mercer County Grange Fairgrounds in Mercer, Pennsylvania. Uh, the Western Pennsylvania Coon and Fox Hunters Association out of Parker, Pennsylvania will be the host club there. They're having it in Mercer with the bigger uh, fairgrounds. And the uh, Master of Hounds at that event is going to be our field rep, Jamie Eastep. Yep. Not too far out of the or off the state line, Ohio and Pennsylvania there. But yeah, pretty good area. We've had a bunch of events there in that area. And yeah. yeah. I've talked to Nathan Collins and uh, Tim Ely with that club. Yeah. Um, the past couple weeks, months leading into this. And honestly, I think with the world championship going from uh, Dyersburg, Tennessee last year to, you know, Mount Gilead, Ohio this year, they may see the biggest increase as entries as any other zones. I and think. they, and they probably will. Yeah. Zone three this year, once again, be held at the lion club civic center in Portland, Indiana. That'll be hosted by the Limberlost Coon Hunters club. And uh, Doug Cundiff, our field rep from Indiana will be the master of hounds yeah. there. They always do good with putting on events there at Portland. The Bryant Club that we use for Autumn Oaks, one of the satellite clubs, that's uh, that's their club, the Limberlost Community Hunters Club. Uh, but this one is held in Portland, so it's right on Highway 27 uh, and uh, easy access. And it's right there right there on the main drag and on 27 is where this uh, – it's not at the fairgrounds. It's at the 
at the uh, Lions Club Civic Center. And a good place to, good area to hunt. Absolutely. Just, I'd say those folks will be wore down by the end of September after yeah. Autumn Oaks and the, yeah. the zones, yeah. but we sure appreciate them. And they do a great job. Zone four this year is going to be at the Missouri State Fairgrounds in Sedalia, Missouri. This is actually the first year it's going to be there after shifting it a little bit. And it's going to be hosted by the Missouri Coon Hunters Federation, which is obviously, it's that's their state association. Right. Kind of got in touch with them looking for a suitable place, and they said, hey, we got the perfect place, and we'll host it for you. And it, it's worked out pretty good. Um, our uh, Master of Hounds at the Sedalia Zone is going to be our field rep, Tim Gilchrist from yeah. Iowa. And he won't have that far to go for it. I don't know how it's a couple hours from where Tim lives there in southeastern uh, Iowa, I guess. But, yeah, that'll be a good place as well. Zone 5, going back to the Sauratown Coon Hunters Clubhouse, and that's in Pilot Mountain, North Carolina, obviously hosted by the Sauratown Coon Hunters Club. Um, Master of Hounds that weekend is going to be uh, Brandon Scalf, one of our newer field reps from Kentucky, and this is going to be kind of his first uh, standalone uh, assignment. Yeah, it's been, you know, I think just in the last 10 years that the Sauratown Club started holding uh, several bigger events like this. They've held the zones before. They obviously did last year as well, you know, so uh, they know what to expect and they do a pretty good job of it as well. But yeah, it's it's a little bit rougher hunting there in North Carolina right there in that part, so a little hilly and, and such, but uh, uh, yeah, they'll have, uh, they always do a good job. there. Absolutely. They're going to make sure they get you in the best hunt yep. they can for yep. sure. Uh, zone 6 is going to be at the Habersham County Fairgrounds in Clarksville, Georgia, and that's hosted by the Habersham County Coon Hunters Association. Master Hounds is going to be from uh, East Tennessee there, Mr. Allen Roberts, our yeah. favorite from Tennessee. Yeah, last year he went down there and he helped Philip uh, Foster uh, do that. This year for Tennessee for, Yeah, regions. Was that it? Yeah, yeah that, was, that right. was it. They ran out of, uh, they were, the power got shut off or something there this year. So, But, yeah. So this year Allen is going to do the, uh, the zone work it himself and uh, – uh, but, yeah, they'll do a good job down there. Good guys down there. And uh, wrapping it up, Zone 7. It's going to be at the Cass County Coon Hunters and Dog Hunters Association's Clubhouse there in Queen City, Texas. Um, Mark Vess is going to be coming over, our field rep from uh, uh, Paris, Texas, to come over and uh, and uh, officiate that event. Yeah, so and they'll do a one. good job there as well. We've had the zones there uh, numerous times over the last 20 years. I know maybe even longer than that, but uh, – you know, for you and I being from Yankees from up here in the north or whatever, I'm classifying you as a Yankee now too. I've but. been converted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that would be kind of tough for us to take a dog down there to hunt there. It's just different. Uh, a lot of it's a whole lot different, you know. Yeah. But uh, that'll be a good place to have it. And uh, yeah, I had a chance. I talked to Bobby. I, I've obviously talked to all the, all these clubs and yeah. their correspondent officers over the past few weeks, just ironing out some details and. And getting ready, and uh, Bobby, Bobby, Howard. Bobby Howard here yeah. with the with the Cass County Club, and uh, I'd love to get down there to Texas. I, yeah, I know. I, that's on my bucket list to get down there and, and be at an event. I'm not sure what event I would go down to, maybe the state championship or, or something, just to see that. Yeah. I've never been to Texas, and I'd love to go down there. Don't quote me on the on the year it was when we had the finals in Louisiana. Uh, but 2012. That, 2012, there you go. So we also we had uh, the zones were there in uh, Cass County, there in um, – uh, Queen City, yeah, and they had, I think, one of the bigger entry numbers. I would say they the got zone. bombarded. They did. They, they had over two hundred <laughs> entries, I think, if I remember right. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, the next step we're we're going to get to how we uh, move dogs from the from the zones to the finals. We're going to get to that in the FAQ portion of it. Let's just talk kind of dates and and uh, hunt specifics right now. So once you've advanced from the zones, which we'll talk about how you do that in just a little bit, uh, you're going to make it to our world finals, which is the following weekend. And if you qualified for our bin show, there's no zones or anything you have to go to. You go straight to the world finals. And our world finals this year are going to be September 21st through 23rd at the Mario County Fairgrounds in Mount Gilead, Ohio. Yep. And that's the 21st is a Thursday. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, hosted by the Mario County Coon Hunters Association. Obviously, no strangers to major events. They've been hosting our TOC regions for us the past few years. I've been at a couple of major events there. Just most recently, uh, Black and Tan Days this year. I think Blue Tick Days last year. Uh, they've hosted the world finals as, as recently as 2018. Um, and they're, they're going to put on a great event. I have no doubts or questions about it. Yep. They were the first ones, you know, on Thursday night at the world finals, we host a kind of a free dinner for all the hunters that come in and they actually started that the last time they had it, the world hunt finals there at Mount Gilead, the club put that on that night, they had a hog roast or something. But after that, it was just, uh, uh, such a good deal. And after that, UKC started uh, taking that part over. Yeah. Uh, one of the club uh, 
contacts there is Rick Stretch, and I guess he gave his recommendation to our national events team on a caterer to use for dinner, right? So I have I have big expectations. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see how it turns out. Yeah. But uh, so I, I guess one thing we should talk about, which is nothing new now, we've been through the Tournament of Champions uh, using the full elimination format. It's been in effect since January of this year. But this will be our first World Finals in which we've utilized the full elimination format. Yeah, hopefully we can talk about that a little bit. It'll be it'll be different. Absolutely, yeah. let's talk about it right now. Yeah, heck yeah. Yeah. So so last year, obviously, you know, we talked about it a lot. We've heard interviews on here from uh, some of the finalists that made it to the top six or top five. Sorry. Yep. Um, and and you know, Dyersburg, Tennessee is a great place to have a hunt in September. You know, there's great big wide open hunting. You know, flat. But this year they had, or this past year they had a historic drought. Uh, it was dry. It was hard to get a good track, and it calls for a few more dead casts than they or us were anticipating. And you know we have so much invested on numbers of dogs advancing for live show purposes and for prizes and everything that we do and all that we uh, do in advance of these events, and most namely the live show. You know we put we bank a lot on that Saturday night live show. Um, all the resources we have into it, a lot of money tied into it and, and advertisement and all that sort of thing. And uh, we almost didn't have a final cast on Saturday night. We yeah. almost crowned a world champion on Friday night yeah. at about <laughs> four o'clock in the morning, didn't we? <laughs> Good have. Good have. Yeah. But yeah, that's what the uh, the full elimination uh, rules that we made up and implemented now starting this year. And it worked out good because this year was a new rules change year. So perfect. we had a new rule book. Timing was perfect for it. So yeah, if you haven't checked out those uh, full elimination rules, look in the rule book. You'll see a full section on that. But let's talk about it a little bit, how that works, what some of the differences. For one, a dog will advance uh, on uh, any even, doesn't have to have a total score of plus points to advance. When you're cast, you know, you're competing against the dogs you draw, and that's you're going to have one winner. The only, the only way you're not going to have a winner in a cast is if every dog scratches simultaneously. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. Cause and we may even have a rule for that. I don't hold me to it, but don't we, don't we have the dog that had the, uh, don't hold me to it. I don't want to speak on it. it well, it almost depends a little bit on what they're scratched for. Uh, you know, if dogs scratch for fighting all at the same time or something, they're like done that, then. But that's right. There's, yeah. Uh, that the rule book is a great place to go for yeah. the particulars on that. I think, uh, you know, obviously we did it at the tournament champions and people are probably familiar with some of the stuff happened there, but when you're talking about it out of the truck, three dogs fall off on a possum and one dog's over here and has, you know, hasn't done a lick yet. He's the only dog remaining. That's your cast winner. Pick yeah. him up and go back to the club. Yeah. And that's, that's another big one that you, once you're the only dog left, there's none more to defeat and your, your hunt is over at that point, even if it's less than two hours. That's right. Yep. And like we said, this is only at the, uh, Oh, at the world finals this doesn't pertain to the zones um this is at the world finals whenever whenever it's uh full elimination it's either win your cast and advance or if you lose your cast you head home yeah and uh and to protect our numbers moving forward and everything that we have planned for the event it's important that we have a cast winner from each cast mm -hmm. and that's what the full elimination format's for and it's worked great so far we've gotten great feedback from tournament champions and from hunters in that event and i think it's going to be the same for the Autumn Oaks Grand 16, I think it's going to be the same for the World Finals. Yep. Well. One other thing that's going to be different, first time this year for the World, instead of taking 104, it's now going to be 108. And that gives us 27 casts. But after after the first round, everything's going to be three dog casts after round number one on Thursday. Yeah. It's going to be different. Yeah. Obviously, we we talked uh, just a couple episodes ago, we talked, we answered some rule back, uh, mailbag questions about rules. And we talked about dogs getting out of pocket and what we can do. Well, uh, we kind of, uh, address this a little bit in the world finals by trying to make three dog casts instead of four dog casts, one less dog to kind of blow out of pocket on you. Yep. Yep. So let's uh, talk about the world finals a little bit. We'll start out with Thursday. You said there'll be 108 dogs there. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, once again, uh, Yoder uh, Nylon is uh, sp helping uh, sponsor this event by uh, by giving us a good uh, price break on some uh, razor vests that each yeah. of the top 108 is going to get along with their plaque. Uh, so that'll be a good deal. You'll come up on Thursday and uh, Confirm your entry. The first thing you'll do is come to the the entry table there where the field reps will be, and you'll draw your own cast. You can't blame it on us. If all the black dogs draw out together, it's your fault. Yeah. You drew your cast number. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't need any messages or anything. So, but uh, you'll draw your cast number. You'll know what cast you're on right there when you confirm your entry. Uh, so they'll stick. We'll go ahead and stick your label to the to the card. You know, barring there being any multiple owners that we have to worry about or anything. Yeah. You'll have your dog in hand. You'll simply walk around, get your picture taken for your zone placement, and you're all set. Yeah. 
uh, it's a super easy thing to do. Yeah, you mentioned dog in hand. May they make they got to make sure they have their dog before they're going to get their entry confirmed. So when you come up to do it, starting at three o'clock, just bring your dog. That's right. Uh, one hundred eight dogs. It breaks down to twenty seven four dog casts. Um, so that's going to be another additional cast, uh, but that'll help us in the long run when we talk about the three dog yeah. cast moving forward. And also on that Thursday night, like you talked about, that started here in Mount Gilead in 2018, there'll be a catered dinner for everybody there shortly after five. You know, you're already drawing your cast. We already have our cast drawn. So that part of it's taken out of the equation. Just right after five, hopefully you'll have your time to put your dog up, get seated, and then we'll come in, uh, give a brief little uh, introduction and release people to go get their food. Yep. That's always a fun hour and a half right there at the world championship. A lot of anticipation and Hopefully we might. I don't know if we're going to do it the same way we did at the TOC, where we uh, where we show a screen uh, how everybody drew out during the dinner or not. But I that, think that was I, kind of cool. I think that's the plan. Is it? I think yeah. that's the plan. Good. Yeah. Good. So that'll be fun. And then uh, obviously we'll uh, have some time there. But uh, that Thursday night will be our first live show of the weekend. Uh, we're going to do kind of our. We've kind of been doing the midnight mayhem type of deal for the for the uh, world championship last year and for the TOC this year. And we're going to uh, follow along with that this year and interview. We'll kind of give some uh, particulars of the world finals, talk about some of the cast breakdowns, some of the favorites, some of the picks from our cast of expert analysts that we'll have yeah. uh, work in the event. And then uh, we'll be interviewing cast winners as they come in. So as soon as we know who the cast winners are, you guys are going to know who the cast yep. winners are. Yep. So that'll be Thursday night starting around I think it's 11.30 to midnight. Uh, the midnight mayhem may throw you off a little bit, but I think it starts at 11.30. Um, it's going to be a good deal. So everybody tune in for that. There'll be a lot more details on that on our social media platforms and on our website. Yep. Moving on to Friday. Uh, we will still be just doing night hunt stuff on Friday. Uh, we'll be down to our top 27, uh, you would think, if everybody, if every cast has someone advanced, which we're hoping that they do. Uh, so round two early on Friday night will be nine three-dog casts, like we talked about earlier, all three-dog casts. And then uh, round three in the late round, we're going to take the nine cast winners from those and have three three dog cast. And that at the end of that second round, late on Friday night, early Saturday morning, we'll know who our final three are. And then Saturday, Saturday is kind of a busy day, uh, short on sleep after a long Friday. Uh, but uh, we get in there early for the bench show. Uh, we'll do confirmation for the bench show deadline to confirm your entry, which is also a pre-entry. Uh, you had to qualify for the bench show at a regional qualifying event throughout the year. Had a bench show, get a category win at one of the qualifying events through the year. Had to enter by the deadline, which we talked about was September 2nd. Um, and then you go straight to the world finals on Saturday. You have to be up there and let us know that you're there and confirm your entry by 10 a.m. 10 a.m. is the deadline. And then the show will start shortly after 10. Yep. And it's just like the hunt. There's You also pre-enter in the same deadline as the, as the hunt. That's the Saturday at Autumn Oaks. Uh, first round. So this is a little bit different. Uh, the, the world final bench show is a little bit different than any other bench show you're going to be at in the year. Uh, it's a non-licensed type deal. It doesn't matter how old your dog is. It doesn't matter what category or, you know, what title your dog has. You're going to be drawing out against dogs of your breed and sex. Um, we'll start out with black and tan males. Come in. We'll bring them in. Um, pick a black and tan male winner. They can go out of the ring, yep. bring in the black of 10 females, pick a black of 10 female winner, yep. and repeat this process. They're all the way through the tree and walkers. Yep. Um, at the end of that, we'll bring and back- And have our, one of each, a male and a female of every breed. Of all seven breeds. We'll bring back our seven male winners and pick a male winner. Bring back our seven females, pick a female winner, and then you got the male and female going up against each other. One's going to be your world champion and one's going to be your opposite sex. Yep. Yeah. Talk about our judges a little bit. Uh, judging the first round there, having to having to go through the 120, 130 dogs, however many end up being there on for the show, would be Mike Seats of Stoneford, Illinois. Yeah, this is an assignment he's been looking forward to for a long time already. So we, I think we got all of our judges for this year. What be uh, before the first of the year already? Did we not? I yeah, think, probably would have been December. I think. Yeah, because yeah, we had something. to get everything in line for yeah. the Winter Classic. Yeah, so Mike's going to – he's been waiting around for this one for a good time, and I know he's looking forward to it, and he'll do a good job. Yeah. So, uh, But, yeah, he's kind of been – he's not been quite as active or as heavily active, you know, as in the last couple of years as he generally is, you know. But, uh, so yeah, it'll yeah, it's be good stuff. to have him judge that first round. And then once all the – once we talked about the 14 uh, breed winners, you know, the male and female of each of the seven breeds, we'll bring in the final round judge, and that'll be Jackie Carpenter of Gambier, Ohio. Yeah. Yeah, and Jackie's been judging dogs for a long, long time as well. And I don't know that she has, uh, I've, I'm not sure if she's done any uh, Winter Classic or Autumn Oaks for us before, but 
I think this will be a good slot for her, and I know she's really looking forward to it as well. Yeah, one of the things I like about it is it's not far. It's you know it's kind of in her home territory, being yeah. there from Ohio. Yeah. She doesn't have very she's far. She's within drive. an hour and a half or two hours from there. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it'll be a good deal, and both of those are great, great dog people. Uh, they they know a lot about the form and function of dogs, and I think it's going to create a really good show. Yeah. So. And then it'll be time for the final cast. Uh, we got the final cast late on Saturday. You know, we'll be uh, doing all we can for that. And uh, we'll have our second live show. Friday, we don't have a live show, but on Saturday, we do. Um, and be doing our live play by play. Um, we'll be there from the time dogs draw out. They'll be talking about their, we'll probably have some interviews from the finalists, talk about the night before and kind of what happened. And then uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some live updates and maybe some live footage from the woods. That's our plan. You know, hope we, hopefully we'll have good service at our final uh, cast destination yeah. and uh, going to put on the best live show we can. Yeah. It all happens on Saturday. You know, mentioned Friday we don't have a live show or anything, but I remember last year on Friday night, and the last couple of years has kind of been like that. Even though even those guys that were uh, did not win on Friday night, we placed the top 20, you know, as soon as everybody's back. Uh, you know, we'll know who the final three are. So we place everybody else after that. So that's another reason they're back there. But it was just such a cool, a uh, cool uh, night, Friday night there, all the hunters sitting back there talking about their hunts and just a, a lot of good buzz, good positive buzz floating around. Our partners at Dogtra have just launched an exclusive program available only to active UKC competitors. So if you've competed any time this year or plan to compete in any future UKC events, you can qualify to receive exclusive benefits through Dogtra. Take advantage of this exclusive program and become a Dogtra competition field staff today. To sign up, visit dogtra.com forward slash Dogtra competition field staff. That's dogtra.com forward slash Dogtra competition field staff. For everyone attending Autumn Oaks, Dogtra has some exciting activities happening at the Dogtra booth. They are offering free on-site repairs for all Pathfinder users on a first-come, first-served basis. Daltra is also doing a big sweepstakes at Autumn Oaks. They are giving away a complete Pathfinder 2 tracking and training system. Visit the Daltra booth in the Hunt Building to enter to win. Well, now that we got some time, let's go over some of the frequently asked questions that we get asked um, all the time. And we'll start out with deadlines. Some of this stuff may be a little redundant, but we want to be able to drive it home and make sure that there's no confusion. Um, and, and first thing we're going to talk about is deadlines. Um, make sure only those dogs that qualified via a regional qualifying event and were entered by the events deadline of September 2nd, 2023, are eligible to hunt the World Championship. Yep, that September 2nd is the Saturday of Autumn Oaks we've been talking about a couple times here, yep. Now, once you're already entered, we talked about the zones a little bit. The deadline to confirm your entry at all zone locations, doesn't matter which of the seven you're going to, is 5 o'clock p.m. local time. So make mm -hmm. sure you know whether you're going to Eastern or Central time. Uh, make sure you keep a tabs on the clock. And uh, Friday and Saturday nights, you have to confirm your entry before 5 p.m. Yep, and they're going to start around 3 o'clock at most of them or right soon after that. So you have plenty of time. You have about a two-hour window there. So uh, I just plan on getting there and getting there early and getting it done and and the the worst case, the worst thing that can happen is you not make the deadline on the first night, and your world hunt is over at that point before you even get started. And you don't want that. You hate to hear that. You know you don't want to see that happen. And that's why we're really uh, trying to make an extra effort to uh, put this kind of content out there. You know, and make yeah. just remind folks five o'clock. You say that's the worst on Friday. I'm thinking back to the TOC regions and Storm Hayes from Indiana. He's uh, a buddy of mine and. Uh, he got a good cast win on Friday night, and he was right there on the cutoff. Um, and Saturday morning, his family was there. They went and got some breakfast. He came back to take a nap, and he woke <sighs> up an hour after the deadline. Oh, and, no. No. Uh, that's yeah. pretty rough. <laughs> hey, while we're talking about that, you got to repeat this same process on Saturday, yep. you know, both days. Uh, if you don't confirm on Saturday, that means they're not going to put you in the draw to draw you out, you know, so that uh, you got to do it again Saturday. Don't let between that be three the and thing five. get you out Yep. And just while we're on deadlines, the time the deadline to return scorecards it will be notated on your scorecard. The event official is going to call it out beforehand. Don't be surprised by that. Know what the return deadline is before you leave. Yep. Hopefully it will be a non-issue. Uh, we talk to our, our reps and officials all the time. We don't want the deadline to ever come into uh, effect in these things. But make sure you know what it is. Make sure everybody has plenty enough time to get their hunt in is what you're saying. Yep. yep. 
Next thing, confirming your entry. Uh, your entry must be confirmed at the event location on both Friday and Saturday, like we just talked about, mm -hmm. by the posted deadline, which would be 5 p.m. local time. Yep. And, and one thing we want to mention is the UKC field rep is going to be busy that day. He's by himself there. You'll have a little bit of help from the local club, but he's going to be covered up confirming entries and trying to keep everything in check. we got a whole checklist we send them that they have to, they have to do for us there while they're, while they're working the event. Uh, with that being said, uh, if you have their number, do not be calling the, the field rep and expecting him to confirm your entry or to do things for you. Uh, it, what you would do in the case where you may be running a little bit behind schedule would be to get in touch with someone you know that's at the event, uh, maybe your buddy's hunting at the event or, or something like that, to go up to the table and confirm your, your entry for you. I don't know, maybe you're running a little bit behind and do it that way. Don't try mm -hmm. to call the field rep. He right. has too much going on as it is. Yep. Uh, we have a little caveat in here. Uh, even if, even if say, you're running a little bit of late, uh, you got stuck in traffic, you call me and I confirm your entry for you, uh, you still got to be there whenever your cast called. Um, that's just how it is. Somebody's got to be there to represent you when the cast is called. Um, uh, so the entry would need to be confirmed by someone else, and the handler must be present when their cast is called out or the dog will be scratched uh, if a handler is running late. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and I know we had a little bit of an issue at one of the regions, I think, at the TOC, where there's a little bit of a misunderstanding, and let's talk about that a little bit. This, what we're talking about is for a cast that's drawn out there at the grounds where they're hunting off the grounds. And uh, let's not confuse that with a separate or a different scenario, a different situation. Sometimes, and I don't know if any of the zones are going to have this, but in case they do, sometimes they might send four or five casts somewhere else to meet at another club and meet their guides there or something at that club or, or somewhere else at another location. And let's say, let's say there's a guy there from that club who's going to meet his cast there or whatever. Right. Yeah. He has to get his dog has to be confirmed and everything. But those dogs that are hunting from that other location, knowingly hunting, those dogs are excluded from having to been, be on site at the headquarters uh, when their cast is called. Yeah. You know, necessarily, yeah, they can be, but they don't have to be. We're not talking about those dogs being scratched. Yeah. Well, let's, let's think about it and put in a real life scenario here. I'm coming to your Kentucky region. I'm from Tennessee. I'm yep. Two and a half hour drive to you. Yep. I get stuck in traffic. Uh, you confirm my dog for me. But it's an hour, cast have been, or casts are being drawn out 45 minutes after the deadline. Uh, you're calling for me. I'm nowhere to be found. I'm getting scratched. Yep, you are. I'm, if no I'm, question. You no know, question. It's not like I'm a guide sitting, sitting an hour away at a gas station yep. waiting on you to come to yep. me. Nobody knows where, or you know where I'm at, but I'm not yep. there. And the cast is ready to go. Yep. Uh, in this situation that we're talking, that you're talking about that, that doesn't pertain to what we're talking about here, um, you, you're asking me to drive. You want, I'm having a guide for your zone. You're needing a guide. You want me to drive an hour and 15 minutes to the club with my dog, confirm my entry, wait for you to do it, and then drive exactly back where I just came from. Uh, sometimes we, you have to work with people a little yeah. bit and, and be considerate of those that are stepping up and guiding for exactly. you. Exactly. Like be that. reasonable about that. Yeah. Well, next thing we're going to talk about is females in season. Uh, obviously, whenever you did your entry, you probably saw our uh, entry waiver and some of the, the things that have to do with our refund policy. Um, if you're female, if you have a female that does come in season, uh, you can uh, put in another dog that's qualified and registered to the same owner. There has to be a common owner on both dogs and also qualified, and you can uh, substitute it for that female in question. Otherwise, you'd have to let us know about your female coming in season. Or let's just say if your dog gets injured and you have a vet, uh, a vet note or a dog deceased or something like that, uh, you have to let us know before the event happens, not after. Uh, you have to let us know beforehand in order to get any kind of refund for that. Yep. Um, if a female were to come in season at the event there on Friday, uh, what you need to do is go up to the master of hounds and because that's no longer before the event. Now we're on the day of mm -hmm. the event. Mm -hmm. You need to go up to the master of hounds and have him do a check for you. And he, in that case, he's going to let us know about the refund. He's going to send that with his materials when he sends it into us. Yeah. And that needs to be done prior to the cast going to the woods on Friday night yep. in order for a refund to be issued. Veteran cast, uh, those are great things. They have a, have a use, but when you get to the world finals or when you get to the world zones uh, or any any part of the world championship, starting at RQEs to the zones and the finals, there's no veteran cast. There's also no youth cast. We get calls about that. All the dogs are going to draw out together, regardless of category, regardless of handler age, all of that. All the yep. dogs are drawing out together. No yep. youth or veteran cast. Now, if you have multiple owner entries, those will be separated, you know, as long as they can, and that's not a problem at the uh, – at the uh, World Championship. But other than that, yeah. yeah. 
once we get to the zones, there's no longer any such thing as spectators on casts. We don't refer to them as spectators anymore. You're not allowed any spectators. Mm -hmm. You're allowed to have one backup handler starting on Friday night at the zones all the way through the duration of the of the rest of the world finals. Um, each handler is allowed to have one backup handler, and the handler shall advise the entry taker who their backup handler is, and it should it has to be notated on the scorecard. Um, so do that at the time when you confirm your entry that we were talking about between 3 and 5 o'clock. Let them know then who your backup handler is. Note it right on your entry form. If you're judging the cast and you get out there, you should probably always kind of look over who's on the scorecard, who's out there with you, make sure all the names match. If somebody ends up having a backup handler that's not listed on there, you need to list them on there before you guys get started. Do yeah, that. and let's let's just take that a step further. Sometimes there's a question, okay, their backup handler is not noted here. We've got somebody here that's not, not uh, listed. Uh, let's not use the scratch rule to get them here. Let's just uh, do the reasonable thing and get them on, noted on the scorecard. A uh, backup handler may not become involved in any part of scoring procedures. They do not have a vote when it comes to voting procedures. They're simply there to back up in case something were to happen to the uh, to the active handler. Now, the only exception to that is they, they can, if, if the, it's no different than the cast has to vote whether or not spectators can shine, uh, that's going to happen at the beginning of every hunt. And in that case, they could, in fact, help shine right. if everybody in the cast agrees. Yeah, they just so don't whatever that vote, vote is is what's going to you know, either shine or nobody shine for the duration of that hunt. Right. And the last thing is, uh, in the zones, uh, backup handler is not required to go and go to the woods. Uh, your backup handler can stay at the truck or walk with you in the woods. Yep. Either so or. When we get to the world finals, we'll have specific details yep. for that when we get there. Can we talk about one other thing? Every year we get a call that somebody wants to make, see if there's any exceptions because they have, uh, somebody's wife might want to go and their kids or whatever, if, if they can just all sit in the truck. And when we say there's only one backup handler, we have to be consistent with right. that. And you hate to, you hate to, uh, have to tell them, no, you can't, you know, you, it's gotta be one or the other, just one, you know, we get it, but Hey, this is also the world championship. And, and, uh, uh, but that answer is a hard, just one backup handler period. It yeah. doesn't matter how young or how old the, the second person is, you know, so be nice if we didn't even get asked that, I guess, you know, cause that's uh, it's the same for everybody. Judges, uh, once you make it to the zones, we will still be using the hunting judges. Um, only qualified hunting judges will be used, and all judges will be pre-selected and approved by the event official. Uh, we're going to put that in the hands of our master of hounds, our field reps that we've assigned to each zone, mm -hmm. uh, with maybe some help from the local club official there uh, if they need some help finding some extras, but it's going to yeah. be... Assigning those before you even yeah, some recommendations cards. and things like that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hunting judges must be at least eighteen years of age and uh, possess the experience, knowledge, and integrity to perform the duties required. Yep, that eighteen years of age is the that's the only time age comes in as a requirement is in any part of the world championship. So that's going to be at the uh, the RQEs, the zones here, and then also at the finals. We won't have anybody less than eighteen years of, of age judging. And I, we both understand that there's probably some 14, 15, 16-year-old yep. kids yep. out there that are sharp on the rules, yep. sharp as anybody. But these are some high-leverage situations, and we don't want to put them in any uncomfortable situations right. or uh, deter their, their love for the sport or, yep. or wanting to compete. Uh, the event official will, at their discretion, have the authority to assign a non hunting judge to any cast deemed necessary. Um, and then once you make it past the zones into the finals, we, we will be using non-hunting judges for the rest of it from round one in the finals all the way through the final cast. Uh, so we'll be getting uh, non-hunting judges assigned to those casts. Yep. Hunt time periods, pretty simple. From the zones all the way to the final cast in the world championship, they will be two-hour casts. Now the only exception to that is going to be if there's only one dog remaining in the cast. That's right. That's the only exception under full elimination rules. That's right. Otherwise, it's a full two hours. Uh, let's talk about posting zone scores a little bit. Um, on Friday night, uh, we'll be working closely with our field reps at the event, getting uh, scores as they roll in, and we'll be posting them to our uh, website and to our forums with live results as they come in. Uh, so those scores will be uh, open for the public, for everyone to see on Friday night. Once we get to Saturday, uh, that will not be the case. We will not disclose Saturday night scores until all scorecards are in in that zone or until the deadline passes. And then we will post the scores for the entire week. Yeah. And isn't that new now? Last Didn't the last couple of years we not post Friday night scorecard or scores? For TOC, we did. Oh, not. okay. 
So uh, so that's that's when Saturday night and you're wondering where the scores are, you won't won't find any Saturday night scores until after the deadline or until after all scores in a given zone are in. So pretty simple there. Uh, let's talk about the appeal procedure. Yep. Um, the appeal procedure is not in effect for any part of the zones or the world finals. Uh, the Master of Hounds or UKC Field Rep that's been assigned to be the Master of Hounds, their decision will be final in all situations. Um, if they were to have a question, which sometimes they do, uh, yeah. sometimes there there may be a question on uh, the interpretation of a rule, or they may be on the fence teetering, uh, maybe what the call would be. Uh, they can reach out to to me or Alan uh, for an interpretation or or help sorting through it. But that's few and far between. Only yeah, a couple and times it and, and it has happened, and and maybe sometimes it's not a matter. Maybe they they just want a reassurance that they have got this right. You know, one thing we got to remember: oftentimes when the questions comes in, it's after midnight. It's been a long day, a long night. And it's, hey, we all get it. We've been there. Uh, sometimes you are maybe not the sharpest at that time of the day when you're tired and this and that. And you want to make sure you get the right call. And and so this is a good option for them, I think, to be able to contact us to discuss the situation just to make sure they've got yeah. it right. And like I and said, now they're not required to. And just and, and, a, and a handler can't request that they contact us because they don't like their decision. Right. That's going to be the, uh, the official's decision, whether they – uh, contact. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say there. Uh, placements. Um, all, all dogs must hunt two hours on both Friday and Saturday night at the zones to be considered for placement at the zones. This is very important. This is a little bit different than the TOC is. Uh, so hope you got, hope you guys pay attention to this part right here. Cause it's going to be uh, very important when you're at the zones, you must hunt a full, a full two nights each night, Friday and Saturday night. Full two hours each night, Friday and Saturday night at the zones. Well, let me back up. Didn't I just say a little bit ago under full elimination rules? Didn't we just talk about that? Was that just the finals we were talking? Because these full elimination rules are not in effect here for for the zones, right. just at the finals. Just they at don't, the finals. Just at the finals. So let's not be confused about it. And hopefully I didn't uh, no, well, make, we, a, make, a, make a mention of that a little bit ago. But, yeah, it's it's just at the finals when full elimination rules come into effect. Yeah, I think you're, I said uh, the uh, from the from Friday night to the zones to the final cast of the World Championship, they're all two-hour casts. Okay, cast. okay. So I think we're in the clear there. Zones is not full elimination format. You must hunt the entire two hours. Even, even if, if you're, you're the only dog, dog. yeah. Yep. Um, if your dog is scratched, minus out of the hunt, withdrawn for any reason on Friday night, your no, your your uh, can your run to the world championship is over. You can't even hunt on Saturday night. Um, if you were to get a cast win on Friday night and then on Saturday night you withdraw or your dog gets scratched for whatever reason, your dog's not eligible for placement. You have to hunt the full two hours both nights. Uh, if you if something happens either night, you cannot advance to the world finals. Yeah. So let's say for instance and that happens sometimes. You're sitting on one of the higher scores from Friday night. You're just kind of Saturday night. Uh, you're just kind of cruising along and making sure as a handler you don't make any bad calls or make any mistakes, and you're just kind of taking last and last as much as you can, uh, you know, because you're you're going to be in on your one night score anyways. But you still have to stay uh, in the hunt, no matter even if you're way out of it, you know. And for any reason, if you scratch or withdraw, then uh, your Friday night score is going to mean zilch. Right. Um, and now let's talk about how we get that 108 that go to the finals. There you go. Uh, the number of dogs advancing from each zone was going to be based on the percentage of the total number of entries overall. Uh, so if we have 600 entries total for the world championship into the six or to the seven zones uh, to get our 108 moving forward, first we're going to take our number from each zone, take a percentage of that out of the overall number, and figure out how many dogs each is advancing. Um, and then we post those numbers beforehand. Um, you know, sometimes things change where – uh, dogs fall out of it or whatever, mm -hmm. but uh, they're the master of hounds there when they're calling cast out. Is going to let you know how many dogs are advancing from your zone before they call cast out. That's right. Um, and the way that we get the dogs that are moving on, uh, say you're working the Portland, Indiana zone and you have 20 dogs advancing. Uh, first thing you're going to do is take your double cast winners. Say you got 12 double cast winners, you got eight spots left to fill. You're going to find the eight dogs with the highest single night cast winning scores, mm -hmm. and they're going to be the ones that advance to the finals. Yep. Pretty simple. That's uh, been that way forever. We do that for the TOC regions as mm -hmm. well. I think most of our hunters are probably familiar with yep. that format. Uh, championship cast wins awarded while we're at the zones in the world finals. Uh, any dog winning its cast with a total score of plus points on Friday or Saturday night of the zones is going to receive a cast, wins uh, cast win towards their degree. Got to have plus points at the zones. Once you make it to the finals, uh, cast winners at that point are going to get uh, – any dogs that advance as cast winners are going to get a cast win towards their degree. Regardless in of their score. one through four. 
regardless of their score. That's right. Um, and now let's talk about the awards for your zone placements. Um, those are going to be given away on Thursday at the World Finals like we talked about. You're going to come up, confirm your entry with your dog in hand on Thursday at the World Finals. You're going to get your picture, and that's going to be for your zone placement there. Um, that's when you get your picture for that. That's going to be published in the magazine and, and all that good stuff. And uh, once again, we're going to mention it again here. Uh, the deadline to confirm your entry at the World Finals on Thursday in Mount Gilead, Ohio, on September 21st at the Morrow County Fairgrounds <laughs> is 5 p.m. Same time again. You're going to know if you make it through your zones or not. We're going to be have we're going to have it published on the forums. We're going to have it on our website and official list by at least Monday afternoon. That's what we shoot for, uh, barring any unforeseen circumstances that may pop up, which would probably only happen in a zone if it were. Uh, but you're going to know. You're going to make sure on that list. But you're probably going to know for even before you even leave the club that night on Saturday night at the zones. And you know, go ahead and make uh, make your yeah. reservations to be there Thursday in Mount Gilead at before 5 p.m. Yeah. at the World Finals. That, that 5 o'clock is not the start time. That's the end time. It'll okay. start around 3 o'clock. So deadline is 5 o'clock. Well, those are a lot of the questions that we get asked. I'm sure we'll think of some more that we get asked a lot or we'll get some different questions, but I think that covers a lot of the bases of the zones and the World Finals. It's here. I can't believe it's here already, but it's here. Yeah, you know, and it's uh, it's always a fun time of the year. Autumn Oaks is always a, a good event, and then it's like in no time you turn around and here's a world championship, but another another fun event. It's different, but it's always fun, a lot of anticipation and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of hopefuls there, you know, and it's just a, it's, it's a fun time of year of all the, all the fall events. You know. There's, yeah. So, t- so today this, this episode is dropping on August 16th. If you're listening to it a day or two late, that's okay. Yep. The deadline to enter your dog into the world championship is going to be September, September 2nd. Uh, you probably have a qualifying receipt. You can mail that in if you want to. I would steer you to an online entry, go to our website, new yep. the online entry tells you how to there on the bottom of the receipt with the, uh, address is to do it. You can go to our anywhere. We have it posted everywhere. Get those dogs entered. Don't waste time. Um, we're getting close to the nitty gritty. It's world championship time. It is. Can we add one more little topic to it? One more item? Sure. Sportsmanship. Yeah. Um, I know you don't have it here on your notes, but man, I'm telling you, sportsmanship goes a long way at any event and there's uh, none more so than the world championship. You know, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of, uh, of highs and lows, I guess, so to speak. You have a lot of aspirations. You make it through the, the, the zones and, and at the zones as well, you know, but it goes for both events, the zones and the finals. Uh, but uh, not everybody can win. You know, your chances, you know, there's only one dog out of a cast of four that's going to be your cast winner. And, uh, uh, you know, a, a good loser being showing good sportsmanship and demonstrating good sportsmanship throughout your hunt you know, if your dog's just not, uh, you know, looking like you had hoped for or whatever, I know it's disappointing this and that, but that is no good reason to, uh, you know, kind of take it out on the rest of the cast or whatever, or, uh, become disgruntled. You know, uh, we talked about, you know, if you're the only individual left on Friday or Saturday night, you know, that they have to finish the hunt and they, in the case we use hunting judges on Friday and Saturday night at the zones. So in order, if somebody's the only cast, if everybody else were to leave, withdraw and would leave or what have you, uh, that individual needs to go back to the cast. That's one where stick around, go with them. Don't make them go through that extra hassle of going back to get a non-hunting judge and things like that. But there's just a lot of things. And, and I think most people are, uh, most of the people in our sport are good sportsmen. And sometimes we just need a little reminder that even, hey, if things aren't going the way we wish they were. Uh, let's keep that in mind. Yeah. Someday, someday you'll be the one where things are going good for you and uh, you'll be happy that somebody stuck around to stay with you and things like that. That's absolutely right. It comes full circle. Yep, sure does. With that being said, we're here on the brink of September and we're about to crown a national champion. We're going to crown some world champions and uh, we're going to have a lot of good content right here on the UKC Hunting Ops podcast. So stay tuned. Thank you for listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. Be sure to give us a follow so you don't miss any of our new episodes or content.